All right. Hey, we're here. Happy Friday, everyone. I, uh, wait a sec. All right. See, I'm getting harassed. We barely started the show this week at Gear Report. It's Friday. I'm already getting harassed for um, starting late. Okay, where, where's the other one up here? There's another one. Jeff always starts late. Man, it's like my wife is in the chat or something, you know? Oh, I'm normally five minutes late. Okay, so I'll tell you what happened today. Yes, my fault completely. Someone stopped by to purchase. Uh, I tore apart a sailboat earlier this week that was donated to the Sea Scouts, and it was uh, basically a parts boat. And someone stopped by to buy one of those parts to make a donation to the Sea Scouts. So I was trying to accommodate that, and I'm a talker, right? So I get to yapping with this guy, and then my phone starts beeping. And I look at him like, oh, it's eight o'clock. And then it hit me. It's Friday. It's time for the show. So I apologize. And uh, and then, of course, I had to set this mic up. I got a fancy new microphone on a boom. And uh, I don't like how this is sitting here. I'm going to I'm just going to keep messing with it the whole show just to mess with everyone. Um, anyhow, this week at Gear Report, we will. What was that, TJ? You don't know what to do with your hand? <laughs> All right. So um, let's go around the room and let the folks who joined us here uh, on screen in the panel say hello. We're going to go in a different order this time. Toby, you're up. Hello. All right. <laughs> Overwhelming us with personality today. That's good. <laughs> Toby from Minor Ridge Armory. Thanks for the invite. Happy to be here. Can't stay the full show, but wanted to poke my head in for a few minutes and say hey to everybody and just kind of see what was going on. And and as Buck just mentioned, make sure that I, I helped you to, to shave and shape your pork chops before you started the show. So, Dude, I didn't even shave today. I, I know, mean, right? it had to have been weird but, for the people but, who are normally here before we start. Because yeah. the ritual is you watch me frantically trying to shave before the countdown hits zero and it's time to go live. And we didn't do that this time. They just sat waiting like, oh, he forgot. I'm sure yeah. that's what, what the discussion was. Yeah, Buck's already called you out, man, just straight up. He's, he's done nailed it. So, Yeah, well, I earned it this time. So I'm not going to complain. Mitch? Yo. <laughs> oh, was I supposed to keep talking? My bad. Uh, yeah, Mitch, gear report, gear tack report.com. How's everybody doing? Good to be here. Thanks for showing up finally, I guess. Nice mic. Yeah. Hey, anything for you? Yeah, man. TJ, you're up. What's up, everybody? TJ with gear report uh, down here in Florida. Just wondering how much bigger that uh, microphone could get in front of Jeff. Yeah, I, I'm as not as sure as well. <laughs> it's, got, it's got to be, it said five, 5.9 inches, like six inches from my face. And I'm just not digging where it said, oh, this will work right here. <laughs> don't this pretend perfect. like, don't pretend like you don't know how far that is, Jeff, from your face. I'm not even going to dignify that with the, Oh no. And then I'm moving the thing here. It's sitting up against a gun rack and I just knocked a K31 off the gun rack, which is in my opinion sacrilege. You know, you you don't shame. knock over you don't knock over Swiss firearms seriously. Come on. For shame. Uh, that's going to that's going to bug me the whole show. Watch it cuz I can't reach it. I so it's just going to have to sit there. It's okay. They're neutral. They don't mind. Yeah, it's not like I got to worry about them coming after me for it, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, and TJ, you introduced yourself, right? I did. You guys are just talking my ear off this evening. So, all right. Let's see who we got out here. Who who was patiently or impatiently waiting? Uh, and before I go through that, did, am I too loud? Not loud enough? Does it sound okay? This is, that sounds good. This is the 
virgin run for this microphone. I have not used it before. No, it, uh, I mean, uh, the sound, you sound just like your normal talking. How's mine sound? This is yep. the virgin microphone for this one as well. Really? Yeah. It, it's a little tinny, to be honest. Which one is it? Is it the uh, the one with the stand? Try to yeah, move it a little, you gotta get try to move it a little closer. Yeah, closer. 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 You're like Jeff. Oh, look at that. Oh, is it that, showed is up. That better? Is that better, everybody? That is actually better, yes. <laughs> it, it does. It sounds more full, deeper. That's a pop filter yeah. for the plosives. That's, that's so when you make I, I, sound. I told you that it had to be like right at my face to actually hear. But that right there where you had it sitting just kind of to the side, maybe I can get mine yeah. like that because that's better. It doesn't block you've your got face. A, you've got a cast iron skillet in front of that thing. Maybe if you guys move them yeah. like, like it closer, they could touch. You could touch your microphones or something. Just the tips. Just just docking <laughs> just the them. Just dock. Beat me to it. Damn it. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying do this with it, and then he does his, and then that's just weird. I don't even know what the point of this is. Nobody but does, but you just made it. internet history. There we go. Yeah. That was yeah, the, that was we're, the we're setting the bar. Tip, tip action right there. We're setting the bar low here. Nowhere to go from up, but up. <laughs> yeah, that's a tradition on this week at Gear Report is we go off the rails early. So then it's like a freebie the rest of the show. If anything goes right, <laughs> it's a bonus. <laughs> All right. But it's good to see that microphone and the, the arm to hold it showed up today. I was hoping to get there in time for it you. It did. I'm excited. All right. Okay. Awesome. So let's see, Toby, since you said you were going to have to cut out early, how, how long are you with us? Uh, it's going to be variable. I, I, I'm not sure, but there's a couple, couple things in play. Number one is I've got to go in here and, and help, help the boss lady here in a minute. And then secondly, I've been running this headset for several hours today, watching some training videos. Uh, some rather weird, unique, and interesting training videos. And so I'm not sure how long this thing's going to hold out. So if I'm just sitting here talking away and the sound goes away, maybe I'm muted and maybe my battery gave up on me. So that so I don't know. Training videos? Yeah. It's, it's pretty <laughs> fair odds that I have muted you if that happens. Indeed. That is also, I mean, if you're, I mean, you're, I don't want to call you a smart guy, but smart enough to know that that's a good idea. Hmm. See, I'm copying TJ the way he had his set up. I think this is less obtrusive. You can't really see it that much. Does it still sound okay? Yeah, it still sounds good. It's definitely less obtrusive. Before I thought, I was like, well, if he covers up his face, it'd be, eh, it's it'd be okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's see. We already saw a couple impatient people in the chat. Um, okay. Pancho Fett was the overachiever to kick things off, it looks like. Uh, good job, Honcho. G23, Jennifer Craig, thank you for joining us this evening. Let's see. Nighthog. Buck is here, the gun loving grandpa. Yeah, we got a lot of people out there. Thank you. It is an honor that you spent some time with us. Pete is here. I don't think I've seen Pete before. Talking to Pickle, that must be, I bet he is. Uh, one of the hanging with pick one mic uh, people. That sounded bad, didn't it? The pick one mic people. You know how I meant it. In the absolute best way possible. Mining Ridge Armory is in the house. Man, we've got a full house. I'm going to show up late every time because it's like, oh, and Andrew Faulkner's here. We got everyone. This is awesome. Oh, making fun of my uh, K31, huh? Oh, and another one. What is this? Since you just throw down the abuse kid. No. So, you know, here's the deal. Shortly after I got my CNR license and started collecting, I, I kind of fell into this Milserp thing. I had almost 30. I went from none to 28 Mosins in a period of just a couple months. I just completely obsessed over them. And I did that for a while until I realized how terrible firearms they are. Um, I mean, they usually go bang if you keep the firing pin channel clean, but but they're terrible. And then I stumbled on a K31 and was like, oh, you know, the 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 ray of light came down from the clouds and 
and I was convinced I needed to own everyone that I came across. Um, but I got that under control fairly quickly. I think I topped out at five or six, but, uh, but I love them. I think they are easily still today the best value in surplus bolt action firearms out there. If you're looking for accuracy and cool guns and, uh, I mean, sure, they're big and heavy and clunky, but they're awesome. All right. So anyhow, that's my K31 spiel because I'll lock him a lot. Five or six. That's that's rookie numbers, five or six. I know. I know you thought I was going to give you an impressive number after talking about the Mosins, and then I'm like five or six. What? But that I, was had, big, that was a big I had the ZFK 55. Is that what it is? The, uh, the sniper rifle that's based off of the Mosin. I had one of those for a while. Um, I say I had it. It actually belonged to uh, belonged to Mikey that owns. Um, I'm blanking on both those companies now. Colorado Gun Company and um, M Plus M Firearms. That's who it was his. But I had it for about a year and a half and played with it and took it. Remember, I took it to uh, down to I, Eric and Chats and yeah, I mean, Chad yeah. was peeking out over. Oh, Oh my God! Is that yeah. what I think it is? How come no one told me it was here? <laughs> well, you saw it as soon as it came out. Yeah. Anyhow, all right. So, what do you want to talk about before you sneak away and your headset dies, Toby? I actually got nothing that I've produced this week and nothing that I've worked on. Uh, but I am planning on trying to get out and capture some footage and do some stuff this weekend. If it, if the rain doesn't dump on top of my head. So I'm actually planning on do, doing some T and E this weekend, but I got nothing. I just showed up just so my pretty face could be seen. Yeah, I, I know I, I'm slacker. <laughs> I'm not going to complain. Yeah. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for spending your Friday with us. Yeah. I'm not going to make any jokes about that. I did do an instructional video again this week. I did do one of my webinar series and a couple of guys that are out there in the audience, Andrew and um, Midnight and, and Buck and uh, now the Mila Mia, several others actually showed up and watched it. So I appreciate your support. Thank you. Awesome. We appreciate you too. All right. So let's see. Why don't we jump into the official agenda? Uh, and for the folks out there, there I, I we appreciate any interactivity this is intended to be an interactive show and something i feel bad about i feel like i talk too much during this show i would encourage the other people on the panel speak up take over just let me know just say hey shut up for a while i'm gonna run this and we can do that um because I, I feel like i monopolize this and no one wants to hear me right but well, i mean it's, uh, it's almost like you own the company Almost. Yeah, a little bit preachy, but other than that. Yeah. A bit preachy. Yeah. I, I'm preachy. just a little bit preachy because I'm trying to keep it, you know, acceptable for a wide audience. I get a lot of bit preachy when I don't have to do that. All right. Let's take a look. What What was the date of our last show? Today. What is today anyway? Today's the 24th, 24th 17th. Okay, so let's go back through here and see what's been published since then. Uh, not too much, I think. We're going to kick off with TJ, um, and we'll talk later about why not too much has been published. I got a few things in the queue that I just haven't had a chance to edit because I have been distracted this week. And we'll come back and talk about that. All right. But Boyd Spike Camp. Everyone sees that, right? Kind of. Kind of? There you go. That's, there you go. Yep. That's All right. Picture. It is. It is. <laughs> I'm telling you, that is the most photogenic <laughs> fence I have seen in a while. That fence is going to get so much publicity. Yep. Yep. All right. Talk, talk to us, TJ. What, what do you think? Uh, the Boyd Spike Camp. Um they uh, they sent us the old stock. I put it on a. Uh, I had a Mossberg 100 ATR uh, chambered in 30 out six, and it was just a a dog. And uh, you know the Boyds came to us and said, or Jeff set forward the thing with the Boyds and said we have the uh, the Spike Camp. And I was like perfect. Was it because 
this this stock was horrible. It was it had a little had a little puncture in it where somebody had hit something with it, and uh, threw it on there. I mean, changed the look of the gun. Um, put a new optic on it. We had uh, one little issue with uh, fitting, uh, but it happens. I talked, you know, I talked to Boyd's. They called me. They actually emailed me and then called me. The engineer called me about the because um, the ATR is a sub model of the 100. So I had to shave just a little bit off one of the pylons or the pillars, and uh, man, it set right in, clamped it down, threw the optic on it, and I, I threw it to the range. I got man, I, I must have shot. I want to say at least I'd say a hundred overall rounds through that thing. No rattle. I put the laser on it when it was done. Still kept it zero. I mean, it's great. I'm loving it. I can't wait to go hunting this season with it. Cool. Yeah, we've done a few Boyd's reviews, and every one of them has been pretty good. Um, the was it the Pro Varmint? No, I think it was the At One. The At One was the first 780 Remington 783 stock that they made in that At One. And they told me they threw two of them away before they thought they had it right. <laughs> um, you know, because it was the very first ones they'd done for that model. Uh, for the Spike Camp, I don't know if they're if they're looking to do uh, sub models as deep as like that ATR 100, or if it's always going to be you have to do a little filing here. He, and um, I mean, they were they were anxious to hear about about what I had to do to it, and they're they said they're actively trying to work on you know uh, getting a, a stock to fit every pretty much every rifle right. so I, I told them what i did and you know i'm sure they they put it in there i mean i don't know how many 100 atrs you know are out there who knows um right but yeah we need to start a campaign for them to make a k31 stock because i have uh i've got i've got two k31 barreled actions that i need to put in a stock of some sort and they haven't made me one yet. Um, they're like, no, we don't make those anymore. <laughs> like, well, come on, just make one for me. Come on. But they, they won't. Yeah. So apparently I have exactly as much pull in this industry as you would expect. They, they might have thought about yeah. it for just so a second. So remind me, you said it's 30 on six. Yep. Yeah, half a second. Um, you said it's 30 on six, TJ? Yes, sir. All right. If you yeah, remind me on Monday, I'll bring you some ammo. Sweet. Yeah. That's awesome. I'll be Santa Jeff. Bring you ammo. Just don't call me the ammo fairy because that it would not be cool. <laughs> okay. But, but um, yeah, so it, it looks awesome. Um and you had that mounted last time I was down there, right? So I've already seen yeah. that. Yeah, I, I, really I, I even I took it apart again to take some different pictures because I, I wasn't happy with the pictures that I had. Um, and then I threw it all back together, and then the uh, you know the right rings came from from Swamp Fox finally, and then uh, you know I, I lasered it out, zeroed it, and off I went to the range. Sweet. All right. I'm not going to tell you that everyone needs to behave and step up their game or anything, but we have been kind of called out to. Whoa, whoa, whoa I saw that. that. 150%? 150%. Listen, Linda, if you get 75% out of me on a Friday, let's consider that uh, good. My, my percentage goes down with every uh, beverage. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, oh, another ATR in the house in 30 out six, even haven't shot in a while. Change to 30865 Grendel. Interesting. I haven't tried. I that's that's what I want to do. My next build, I want to do a 65 Grendel because I've never tried it. Um, I've done some blackout 300 blackout. Um, I like the 65 Creed more, but I don't have a lot of places where I'm shooting the kind of distance that I want. The 6.5 creep more. So, yeah, Grendel looks pretty good. Um, I accept ammo also and will definitely call you the ammo fairy. All right, well, deal's off then. Because, no, ammo fairy, that I was saying, don't call me the ammo fairy. 
that uh yeah um but uh, the ammo genie the ammo genie we could go with that that could work but but just so everyone knows when you review stuff when you review guns for gear report to the extent that i have ammo we used to have a bunch of ammo sponsors um and honestly it was enough of a pain in the ass that i just kind of stopped dealing with the ammo companies um, I should probably reach out. I'm getting really thin on a couple calipers right now, and I need to reach out and see if I can get them restocked. But uh, but it's been a year and a half, two years probably. SIG will send something every now and then. They're pretty good. I can reach out and say, hey, here's what I need, and they'll send some stuff. But, uh, but yeah, for people doing reviews, um, I will send out ammo if we have it. Um, because this gets expensive reviewing guns if you got to pay for all this stuff by yourself. Uh, so I try to help when I can. I just have limited ability to do that. Uh, let's see. I never changed it. We band. appreciate it, Jeff. Yeah, I wish I could do more, but I'll, I'll do what I can. That's it. All right, so what else do we have? So we had talked about – Clover talked about the Henry last week. We talked about the Boyd's. A leather holster. Oh, see, Clover isn't joining us to talk, even though the next two were his, weren't they? Yes, Clover's they were. on fire. He's like a machine over there. He is. Yeah. So this was interesting, though, because he said it it, uh, it came from overseas. It was, uh, I was going to say Czech Republic. It was Slovakia is where this came from. Um and you can read through it. He gave it a four out of five, which is pretty impressive. And you know, 60 bucks for a real double stitched leather holster is pretty good. Um, and it looks pretty nice. He seemed to like it. So I highly encourage you, if you're looking for that type of holster, go read this review. Leave a comment for the Tactical Leprechaun. Watch his video. Like the video. Leave a comment. See, I'm giving people too much homework. They're going to be like, dude, that's an awful lot to ask. I'll so just that's go. Way too much, that's way too much work. Yeah. If you want to just read it, you can do that. And you see, he's got other stuff in there you might find interesting. His chest rig from Alien Gear. And uh, yeah, he's got a bunch of different stuff in here. So, all right. Go check that out if it's interesting to you. Let's go back. So more comments have come in. Toby, send me the rifle for testing. Jeff, send me the ammo for testing. Yeah, that uh, I would have Toby'd send the rifle, you know. Maybe. No, actually, I probably I don't know. Uh, in all seriousness, all jokes aside, um, we're always open for uh, anyone who wants to do reviews. Uh, you can go check out on Gear Report that uh, Write for Gear Report link at the top of the right of the orange bar and uh, see the different ways that we can work with content creators. So if you'd like to get into doing reviews, write some stuff up, share them. We'll publish them, uh, work through getting you published. And then uh, if everything works out well, you can be part of the team. You can live the dream. That's what you're doing, right, Mitch? Yes, the dream. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Indeed, it does. See, I really enjoy this, where I take a comment that someone made, Toby in this case, before that discussion came up, and then apply it to the discussion as if he was replying to what I said. Ah. Uh -huh. Kind of like CNN. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah. Just send me your credit card number and I'll set up some reviews, to make it easy on you. Hey, it's um seven. So all of you, just there's my credit card number. Oh, okay. Let's do some real work. Let's have a, a discussion here. So I'm looking to purchase my first handgun. What would be best for a woman? Okay. First, Miss Craig, let's not be sexist here, all right? Um, 
I, in all seriousness, let's, uh, we'll come back to the big gong show review later. Maybe Clover will get off his butt and join us at some point, and he can talk about that. But I want to, let's see, is it by handgun? We're going to live search here um, on Gear Report for an article. There it is, because my fat roll is hanging over the edge of that gun in that picture. See, now you can't unsee that. So this article, how to choose right handgun for personal protection or concealed carry. It applies to any kind of gun, but, um, you know, there's a little bit of sorting by brand to be sure you're, you're starting with something decent. But then it walks through a process of helping you narrow the field. You start with, you know, every gun out there and we're going to narrow it down to reputable brands. And then we're going to figure out what you're going to do with it and look to narrow down that list to guns that would be appropriate for that. And then, uh, you know, what kind of ammo do you plan to shoot with it? You know, if it's defensive ammo, if it's, you know, practice range ammo, whatever. Uh, and then that, that, so when you narrow it down to a short list, then you, you go out and get your hands on every one of them that you can and shoot them and see what feels comfortable. What do you feel confident with? What do you shoot accurately? And then, uh, you know, you're, you're going to want to get some training and discussion about capacity, different factors to consider there. I'd encourage you to read that and ask any questions you have about that. Um, so with that said, um, oh, look at that. We've got some good comments here. Let's go through those before I talk anymore. I'm going to ask to go around the panel here and everyone give your thoughts on this as well. But let's look at some of these. I've shot a SIG 9 millimeter. Um, good. So that's a starting point. And uh, based on how that felt to you, you know, you, you can look at other guns that are similar. If you really loved it, yeah, maybe, maybe that's what you want to go for. Let's see. The honcho says, one that fits, best fits you. Test fire as many as you can. Gun buying research is fun. Have fun. I agree with all of that. Absolutely. Yep. Well said. Yeah. I'd suggest going to gun range that rents guns and try different ones. I, okay, so here's where I'm thrifty. So I would say if that's what you have to do to get your hands on those guns, then do that. Um, but if you can find people who have, um, who have a bunch of guns that wouldn't mind um, getting, um, getting out to the range with, and letting you shoot them, that's a good way to do it, especially if they take care of their stuff. I get a little leery of gun range rental guns as being, you know, you may shoot it and then you go buy one that hasn't been worn out by people renting it and it feels different. So um, I know uh, Pickle, so I see discussion about uh, Pickle out here. Uh, he wasn't a gun guy at all when he started doing the camping writing at Gear Report, and he came he came to Quarter Horse Arms with me, and I brought all my a uh, bunch of my pistols out, and Alan at Quarter Horse Arms. He opened up the safe at Quarter Horse Arms and said, "Yeah, shoot whatever you want." And I bet Pickle shot 20, 25 guns that day, and it really helped him figure out uh, what he was comfortable with. I think he ended up with a what did he get, Toby? A Glock nineteen. Yep, yeah. G not team. Yep. Qualified with the SIG, but it just wasn't comfortable in my hand. So my opinion, if it's uh if it's not comfortable, then you're not gonna really be confident with it. And that that's bad. You need to be confident with it. Um, I believe, all right. Picked up by BFF. I believe Miss Craig may have been in the background of hanging with Pickle and Mike a couple weeks ago, like just off camera, strategically harassing Pickle periodically. Um, unless I got people mixed up, I'm I'm pretty darn certain that's who it was, though. So welcome. I'm, I'm glad you joined us here. Um, good question. What kind of sig was it? Ah, uh, she says yes, it was excellent. I thought. Thought I recognized there, Toby. What say you? Uh, 
you know, unfortunately, it's the, the topic's already been been pretty much hammered home. Um, the only thing I would add to it, additionally, besides, bar, you know, go get get all your friends together, go have a range day, and uh, try all the different ones, get all the different flavors, choose, pick a caliber, and focus on that. Say, okay, everybody, bring all your nine millimeters today. All right, just nine millimeters. Please don't bring anything else. Get them, practice with them, touch them, feel them. Um, focus on firing at least five to ten shots per firearm, at least. Um, and again, focusing on the way the fit, form, feel, and function. So the, the ability to, to be able to rack the slides, uh, actually load your own magazines, actually load, you know, actually chamber your own rounds. You do you. Don't let somebody load it for you and hand it to you. Actually go through all the functionality of it from the ground up. And then uh, also as a side note, um, see if you can take them apart. Uh, try to take a few of them apart and see how easy they are to take apart and clean the ones like narrow it down first like try to actually load them put them together fire them and see how they feel and focus on the recoil and how, how it works for you and your ergonomics of your body then once you've narrowed it down to say five or ten try to take a couple of them apart start looking at some of the more co complex functions of them so do they have thumb safeties do they have decockers do they have weird little nuances that you're not going to want to deal with um, and then you know start narrowing it even further down and further down until you get to you know say two three four and then from there shoot 20 30 rounds a piece and just pick the one that feels best to you um, or just go buy Glock 19. That'd be fine too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because that's what you're going to end up with. I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, uh, you're going to, you're going to end up with seriously, I'm um, all joking aside. You're going to end up with a Glock 19. Getting that commission from Glock every time. Don't you? <sighs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, uh, Cl 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 Clover's going to hang me, hang me out to dry on that one. Go ahead, Clover. Feel free. All right, anyone else? Mitch, TJ, either of you have comments here? I mean, as I mean, basically, as long as you're comfortable with it and you're, you know, you, if you're comfortable with it, you're going to enjoy shooting it. You're going to be competent with it. I mean, I bought Crystal. Probably we've gone through three or four different pistols, and she just, you know, she, I don't like this one. It's too hard to rack. All right, boom, get rid of it. Let's get something else. And uh, you know, if we could test fire some that friends had or I had, we'd do it. If not. I would just buy one and, you know, I don't like it. All right, let's get a different one. She ended up getting the uh, the SIG uh, 938. But she likes it as far as I know. I mean, it's a Legion. I don't, I don't know why she wouldn't. It's funny looking. It is. That's right, Toby. I get my perks from SIG on that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mitch, any comments or have we, we beat well, this one? No, no uh, you can't. So, um working in a gun store and, and helping people with this every single day for three years, you, you learn a few things. And number one that I learned, tell a, tell a woman to buy a revolver. That's it, right? Oh my God. No, never. I, that is, that is the worst thing you could ever say to any human being. So she has to figure that out for herself. But the truth is if it doesn't feel comfortable while she's shooting it, she won't feel confident. Like everyone's saying now, in given that, I can narrow down the, the top purchased firearms uh, and depending on the caliber. So if you go 380 or 9 millimeter, because 40 and 45, unless you like that caliber specific, it's not realistic to carry unless you like that caliber to carry. So 380 and 9 are both good calibers for stopping power. Um, 9 millimeter is your best all around. So most people go with the SIG 938. They, right, go, Toby. they go with the Glock 43. They go with the, um, also the SIG, uh, the new SIG 365. Um, it, it always seems to revolve or either the shield nine, a single stack nine from, for, you know, Smith and Wesson, but those seem to be the ones that people would shoot more often, but it was always someone saying, Hey, this is my friend. She's never shot before. Here's what she should get. And we always step in and go, that's nice. You're, you know, you're a nice friend. This is their decision. This is their money. This is their safety. They need to hold it. They need to smell it, taste it, all of that good stuff and shoot it. But ultimately it's going to be one of those things that you're so into shooting it that you like shooting it. You want to shoot it. You enjoy going to the range. You enjoy carrying it. If that's your goal, then you're going to get better at it. You're going to get more proficient, more safety conscious, and you're going to enjoy that firearm. So she has to go out and do the research. That's half the fun. 
Um, like you said, find friends that have firearms. Some ranges, depending on how well maintained the range is, their firearms are not as beat down. I've seen some that are really bad. I've seen some that were top of the line. Depending on where you live, they can provide you with some very excellent firearms. Go to the store and ask them to hold those firearms that you're interested in across the counter. Hold it in your hands. See if it feels comfortable. Is it too heavy? Does it fit your palm? Is it, you know, all of, like the function is all there. Um, and once you narrow that down to say maybe four or five, that's when you start doing your shooting and make your decision. You can change your mind. You can go with a, a larger, a medium frame or a larger frame if you wanted for different reasons, but ultimately it has to be for you. So, so I agree with Mitch. I do want, I do want to clarify two good points though, uh, or, or extrapolate on two points that he, he didn't touch on. That was great information. And, and Mitch is spot on. Definitely. Absolutely. 150%. Um, there's two things that, that there was a side chat going on with Clover and I over that he brought up that I was thinking the exact same thought as Mitch was talking through with regards to the G 43, the G 42 platform, the, the Smith Wesson shield, um, some of those smaller firearms, there is a much, much heavier slide return spring, uh, articulation. So I would exercise the caution that if you opt to go with something like that, again, borrow it and shoot it, preferably a brand new one out of the box, not one with aftermarket parts like Jeff was mentioning, not one that's already broken in to where it has reduced um, reduced tension on the, the uh, slide return spring. Do one straight out of the box because it, it is a it is a thing even for uh, even for, there's 150 percent. You nailed it. Clever. Um, there is a thing even for a full grown, super strong guy. And now there are techniques to overcome. There are techniques that you can learn that, to overcome being able to chamber that round uh, with a stronger spring, but that's a training element. So is that something you really want to do is to, to get that higher level of training or you just want to get something that works for you and for your body out of the box. So Mitch is spot on in the way that you would pick one, but uh, in those smaller framed guns, you know, 365 Smith Wesson shield nine G 42 G 43, be cautious and cognizant of that slide and the return spring on it. So there's always going to be that trade-off. So like the, I joked about the G19, semi-joke, trade-off is that that slide is pretty easy to articulate right out of the box, but it's thicker, fatter, and bigger. So is your hand big enough to be able to, to get a good purchase on it and to be able to reach around by breaking grip or not breaking grip by using a different technique to get magazine release, right? So there's, there's always some kinds of trades off, trade-offs. Also keep in mind that Smith & Wesson has a whole line of EZ models in the 380 and 9mm. The, the slides and magazines are much easier to action. And, and we yeah. would show that to folks who had, sometimes people come in, they have arthritis in their wrist. They have problems yeah. with their hand. And they're like, I can't function this thing. It's too tight. So we would say, have you looked at the EZ line or have you looked at you know other types? And, and again, sometimes a revolver for, for certain folks is the right choice because of all the functionality that's in a semi-auto that's more than they want. They want something simple. They want something direct, whatever. But absolutely what Toby said. And uh, everyone's added good comments. It's just uh, it takes the time for you to do the research because it's fun. And it's kind of important if you want it to be, you know, they, your go to. And, uh, easy rack as well. And it saves money because you don't keep buying and buying and buying and buying and buying. Oh my God. Exactly. Exactly. Because guns are expensive. Firearms are, are inherently expensive. The low end, you're start, starting at 200 at the cheapest, mm -hmm. and, but you kind of get what you pay for at that rate. The higher you go up, you can get better quality, but that is not always going to fit what you need. So like yep. Janet. Janik's a good example where you can get yep. into the Janik TP, TP9 Elite, SF Elite for around the 299 mark. Um, super good gun. Oh, yeah. Janik rocks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Wait there's not that Janik hat. I need, no I need a Janik hat or a shirt. I do. Yeah, everybody's leaving to go to Gizzard Gary's show. It starts here in just a few minutes. No, so. there's still people in the chat. I was saying there's no one in the chat saying, why is he saying Janik? Oh, yeah, because they're used to it. More common comments on your videos. Yeah, yeah they're used to it. Assume Me it being insane. They're like, yeah. Eh. It's him. Uh, it's let me see here. <laughs> He's trying to sound fancy. Yeah. Fancy. All right. So uh, the last thing I will say to Miss Craig is have Pickle bring you um, – 
over to quarter horse arms and we can kind of replicate what he did if you like um i have no idea when because everyone's got busy schedules but uh, you know i haven't got my pistols out and shot them in a while so if you want to head this way we'll get them all together and uh you know let you shoot a bunch of different stuff and see how it works so there you go all right Let's see if we can get back on track. We still had we still had one left, didn't we? From uh, from Clover. All right, how do I put that back on the screen here? Did I just click? You're that the, you're the puppet master over there. Come on, you get it figured out. I can't. I'm not that smart. That'll make it go full screen. I think I have to remove it and then re-add it. it. Is. Oh. I thought it was removing, and there it's back. Okay, excellent. I meant to do that. Yeah. Okay, so we were in that article. We'll get out of there and go back to the homepage, and we'll go into the Big Gong Show, another Clover Tech review. And if I'm not mistaken, this is part of the batch that he got. Uh, maybe I'm making this up, but I know at the end of SHOT Show, um, we ran into uh, Clover and uh, that guy's wife, uh, Armentia, in the parking garage as they were trying to get out of town uh, to go home. And they had the back of the truck full of uh, do-all outdoors goodies uh, that as they were tearing the booth down, they said, yeah, uh, hey, Clover, why don't you come take some of this stuff? You can review it. So he took a bunch of this stuff home and has been working through it. And uh, this is kind of neat. Um, Alan has got something of this similar kind of self-healing target, rubber target. Uh, he has a plate rack from a different company in his review queue. And uh, we were shooting that uh, last time I was out at Quarter Horse Arms. And uh, just like what you see here, I mean, uh, if you shoot something really big, it'll leave a little bit of a hole. But little stuff, it can be hard to figure out where the hole was. Um, although he shot the mess out of this one on the screen. Uh, so go check out the video if you want to see how this does um, in a little bit more detail. But, uh, but you can see in the picture, you know, buckshot was a tiny little hole. I think there's a lot of splatter from the ground on that, maybe. Um, maybe not, actually. Um, the slug made a visible hole, the bird shot. Oh, the bird shot made the, all of the, that, that mess on the target, and then the buckshot made the little hole. Um, I, I think these rubber targets are pretty cool and they seem to last pretty well. Depends on what kind of shooting you're doing. What, what do you guys shoot? AR 500 steel yeah. and paper. I shoot birds. About it. So moving, shoot shotguns. moving targets usually. <laughs> Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did get that right. The shot show hall. It was too. That was impressive. And, <laughs> and I'll tell you, it down. Maybe the more impressive part was, uh, I, if I remember right, uh, the leprechaun. You, you see in the picture here, he's his face is green. That's kind of how he looked. He was not feeling so chipper but still hauled a bunch of stuff out to the truck. So yeah, that was dedication and he did it so he could help people figure out if they'd like the stuff or not. That's, that's how everybody looks after shot show. We yeah. all look great after shot show. Yep. All right. So uh, go read that. If you like uh, Clover, doesn't want to join us to talk, but he is still chiming in, which we appreciate. It's a riot to use with shotgun birdshot for sure. Spins like crazy. Doesn't hardly damage it at all. I bet. So so the birdshot, it looked like just left little gray marks, uh, almost like little pencil dots, I guess. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Paper and steel. So Buck is old school. All right. All right, folks. So that is the end of the... Um, recently completed reviews um and we've got some more in the queue that i just haven't gotten to yet 
Um, and I, you know what? I think I'm even going to talk about why, because I think uh, some of the other f content creators here m might find it interesting. Um, it may be something that you you want to look into yourself. I don't know. What do you think, TJ? Do they do they want to hear about this? Sure. Why not? You know what I'm talking about, right? Everything. So I have, I want some feedback from, from the people in chat too. Uh, and it's a little bit of a long story. I'm going to try to condense it. I got a surprise email from Amazon that said I was a valued reviewer and they wanted to invite me to the Amazon Vine program. I didn't even know what that was. I figured it must be something new because I didn't know what it was. Um, lo and behold, it's been around since 2007. It's not new at all. I was just ignorant. So that happens more than I'd like to admit. But uh, so I get in there and the Vine program, they have this whole subset of a couple thousand products, typically new products that brands are trying to get attention for. And I can surf through all of these products and read the description and look at a picture. And if it's something that I'd like to do an Amazon review on, I click request. And within a couple days, it shows up. So, um, Vine, 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 I'm going I'm to type it in here. Vine, there we go. Like the plant that creeps up the side of the wall of Vine. Um, so... It's been it's been interesting, but it's been like a time suck for me because the the way you go through the list is very inefficient. They won't let you search like I need uh, marine speakers for when the when the new Humvee gets here. I got a marine head unit radio off of Amazon Vine. And uh, so I need speakers. Well, I can't just go search for speakers like on big Amazon. I've actually got to go through these different categories and they only have so many on a page. So I got to do page after page looking to see if I can find speakers. It takes forever. And the stuff, they, are, they have a very limited quantity that they make available for any product. So you got to check frequently and hop on stuff quickly if you want it. And uh and it, it's taken too long. But then the reviews are very quick. So this is why I mention it for the content creators, two things. One, if you're doing Amazon reviews, they say it's based on how helpful they are. So uh, when you're reading Amazon reviews, there's a little button under it that said, you know, was this helpful? If you click helpful, then that is feedback for the person who wrote it, but it goes into the reviewer score. And when you get it to a certain level, then they'll invite you into the program. And it looks to me like it's a, it's around 150 p times that people click, click helpful, and then they invite you into the program, or at least that's about what it was for me. So um, they, they, and they actually have some gun stuff in there and camping stuff and, you know, all the different things that we cover, there, there's a whole variety of products available and they'll send you four or five products a day. And, and I don't think they care what the value is. It's just, you know, request some products and they'll send them to you and you just have to use them and then do an Amazon review. So the Amazon reviews are pretty quick. So first point was, if that sounds interesting to you, that's my understanding of how you get into the program is write reviews on Amazon. And when people click them as helpful, yeah, so this microphone that I have, the microphone that TJ have, what are you doing? What's that? No Amazon for me. Okay. They booted me, remember? It's it's pretty bad it's, when you've been kicked off different. of Amazon. Uh, no, but that's different. That was their affiliate it's program. The it's principle, but it's the principle of the matter, isn't it? Isn't it the principle of the matter? So it's like, we're not going to give you money to sell products on our platform. We're not going to give you an affiliate link and an affiliate... We don't want to give you money. We don't like that. Oh, but you can come write reviews for us and we'll treat you special for doing that. Yeah, I'm going to go with no on that one. Maybe. Well, hey, that's up to you. And it looks like uh, G-Webs is not necessarily completely on board with it either. Um, and yeah, it does. It doesn't really make sense to me why they want to inhibit you. It's like Amazon charges brands per product. Like they, ha I, I think there's a buy-in just to get access to the program. And then they pay per product that they send out to the 
reviewer. So the brand supplies the product and pays a fee. So Amazon's like, oh yeah, we, we want to get the, keep signing up for stuff. We'll keep sending it to you because they're making money. You'd think they'd want to make it easier. Um, but anyhow, the thing that's really got me excited is as we're doing these reviews, it's really short and simple. You know, I'll put a couple pictures up, a couple, two, three sentences describing the product and, and a little headline for it. And that's it done. And, and I'm trying to hone in on what is the, like the, the bare minimum information that can be an effective review that is helpful to people so that it takes very little time. And it hit me after doing a few of these that, you know, I can do the whole thing in 15 minutes if I'm slow. Um, so you, why can't we do that on gear report? You know, cause we do these long form reviews that take a long time. It is a pain in the butt. And, uh, we, man, can, we can do that. I've got, I'll, I'll give you three tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but seriously, what, what do you guys think? And I'd like feedback from from the audience as well. Uh, you know how? Yeah, and and this is this is my point. You know, it tells you how valuable reviews are. Then, yeah, there there are a couple different ways you could interpret that. But um, but yeah, so I want to be sure that the reviews I'm doing still provide value. You know, I don't want to. Part of me wants to be efficient and say, okay, what's the minimum I can do to cover my responsibility for this microphone setup? You know, um, because I have other things to do and it's not like they're paying me. They just gave me this, you know, $60 microphone. I know, I, mean, I, know I have a lot of clients and a lot of friends and they like, they'll order stuff and they're, and that's the first thing is, oh, it got great reviews, mm -hmm. great reviews on this product. And that's, that's usually the first thing they check. And, you know, I, you know, I'm in construction, so it's, shower valves and you know sink faucets and stuff like that where it's like you know great amazon amazon reviews i got it i'm like okay perfect and uh, and it's usually one of the first things they check so it's i mean it may not be a, a, a long review but the people are reading the reviews and looking at the star at the star ratings and that's it's a big thing for for a lot of amazon buyers until until amazon comes back and talks to me directly i'm gonna side with toby just because I've never monetized anything, I joined the affiliate program on Amazon, wrote reviews. They ask me to write reviews for things that I purchase, but based on they do that with everyone, right? Mm -hmm. Please write a review for us. I was more than happy to do that. Hey, this is kind of what I do sometimes. I'll do this. I fill out the review. I do a nice, quick, you know, headline, same thing. Um, we're sorry. We can't let you review anything. That was all they, all they said. No explanation. No, I've never done reviews for them. So what are they basing it on? The so, fact that I've been a prime member for two, three, four or five years, bought right. all these things. And now they want me to review stuff, but they won't let me review stuff. So I was like, I responded to their customer service and I said, you know what? If you let me know why I can't review, then I will be happy with that. At least a decision. Otherwise, maybe I'll just cancel my Amazon Prime and I'll find my goods somewhere else. Yeah, because God forbid they 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 will go bankrupt without your hundred dollars. I'm just I know that. that. <laughs> I know. No, listen, I, I'm with Mitch. Okay, so so here's the deal. So worst case for me, the story is even more horrible because you know not to one up that my mine's worse than yours, Mitch, but mine's worse than yours. I did a review on GearReport.com, put some some hyperlinks to Amazon affiliates inside of that report and for some rando copyright infringement reason based on the homepage of gearreport.com. Okay. Not the page where I wrote the article based on the homepage of gearport, some rando copyright infringement that they refused to tell me what the answer was for. They refused to do anything with that information. They refused to research it any deeper. They was like, yeah, you're out. And I tried, I tried to fight it and you know, obviously to do affiliate links and they kicked me out and said, yeah, no. So, I mean, they wouldn't even respond. They wouldn't even give me the, the respect of a response to say, oh, yeah, yeah, here's the reason, you know, used our logo the wrong way. You know, okay, I, I can buy that, but, you know, let's talk it through for stars that don't own the darn website, right? But, you know, whatever. So, yeah, that's that's um, special. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there before I get too negative. But So, I and, and all of those situations are I'll, I'll leave it there and get to they're, they're, they're important and valuable and all that jazz 
but I, I really brought it up. Oops. I brought it up so that we could talk about how can we make the review process more efficient and effective on gear report based off of what I'm seeing, um, you know, as I'm doing these Amazon reviews and I'm like, man, this could be, um, th this could be a good way to get more content up there. Maybe it's not as deep content, but can we have multiple types of content? Okay. I got a pitch for you. Three yeah. word reviews. That's all we need. Three words. Star ratings. Do I get to no. pick the review, the words? No. So, so, so there's two distinct conversations you're having there. And then I yep. do have to bounce after this. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and let this be my last, you know, opus as I, as I leave, but there's two distinct conversations you're having there. So if there are for certain products where I could agree with that rationale, like for example, the, the, the nose cam thing that you, that, you know, from China, from China, you know, I, so the nose, the nose cam earwig camera, Sure. I mean, you could pop off a 15 minute quick. Yeah, that, that, there you go. We could pop off a couple of quickies, you know, nice, nice demo, nice yeah. demo. Um, <laughs> but things like the, the SIG, the SIG Virtus, the SIG, you know, the, the P320, um, you know, TJ's review of the, uh, you know, his upcoming review of the Diamondback stuff, if he ends up getting it, the inner ordinance, a, you know, AR9 platforms, so on and so forth, the Titan review, the, the Crimson Trace reviews and stuff. Man, I, I just morally can't, I can't not give a comprehensive and good review to the viewers because I feel like I'm doing a disservice in not truly running it in a way that 99% of the people aren't going to be running it, right? So like if I, if I took a pistol and reviewed it and ran a thousand rounds through it, how many of the people who actually watch our reviews are going to shoot a thousand rounds through their pistol? not many right so if i don't do that and show them what's the best case and worst case scenario for this product and give it my full and absolute effort then i can't i just can't sleep at night um nose nose cam sure so i mean i think there's two distinct conversations in there <laughs> i still want to do i still want to do the robust reviews gear report is known yeah. for going into more detail than most places that that's our jam right is that we're thorough and we're going to run stuff hard, especially in the firearm side, uh, and let people know how it um, how it I mean, does. I think I still think it needs to be product based, like Toby's saying. Like you know, if you have like yeah, the uh, the, the endo snake or something like that, where it's just a you know a, a device or something, and it's this and that. You know, you could you could probably do a just a basic blah 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 five star or three star or whatever. But you know, as or far webinar as, like, yeah, or, or, these, or you know or something something fancy where it's, you know, it's going to take some time and some, and some effort. It's, you know, we need to do the long reviews. So people know there's a lot of little things that, that matter. Right. But for the, for the things that, uh, that don't really require that in depth is that should I, should I, and this, uh, G was asking some questions about like you know, trying to clarify exactly what I'm suggesting here. I I'm, I'm not necessarily suggesting um, adding a system to let viewers add reviews to our post. Uh, we already have a comment section on gear report articles and comments in, in videos on all the different video platforms. I mean, there's already a place where people can give feedback on that kind of thing. And, and I would love if, uh, if there's a product that we have posted a review on, leave something in the comments. You know, if your experience was different, if your experience was the same, if you did something different with it. So, Jeff, are you looking at more like a short form for some yeah. of these items? It's not the long developed forms, a shorter form review. So some yeah. of the items that we get in. So if I, it, you know, whatever it is, if it's clothing or shoes or lights or things that don't require, you know, weeks of testing. Um, or breakdown videos or anything like that, then you could use the short form and kind of hit the highlights. Here's what you need to look out for. This is a piece of junk. This is pretty decent for what you get for the money. You know, something like that. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's, I mean, literally, if you, if you look at the Amazon reviews, it's a star rating. Uh, you can upload some pictures, a headline, and then the free form text area where you can write whatever you want. Um, and I, as I'm trying to do these quickly, 
I'm thinking, man, it would be nice if we had, uh, like, you, like you called it a short form review where it's just a few sentences and it's quick and easy. And then each of us, I mean, anytime we get something, it's like, oh, you know, people might appreciate some feedback on this um, instead of having to dedicate hours to documenting it the way we do in the um, in, in our long form reviews. You know, we could just post something real quick that basically tells them, yes, we like it. No, we don't like it. You know, and and I was I as I was thinking through this, I was like, OK, what what's the minimum we need? And I think it's it's really kind of the stuff I mentioned. Like so we've already got our gears rating. So we stick with that. We put a couple pictures up uh, to show relevant things. So I would argue that the key is going to be because one of the biggest things with Amazon reviews is a lot of pictures a gear rating, a couple of quick sentences or a quick webinar type video like this or something like that. If you're going to do one of the short forms, because the pictures show real world usage and show people the things you don't get in that, that, that faked up advertising picture. That pictures you on Amazon. sell the product. They yeah. sell the product like Toby yep. said. That. Yep. And, and we do a lot. We put a lot of time and effort into our photography at Gear Report. That's something that behind the scenes, we, we get notes going back and forth. And, you know, uh, we, we have a private writer's forum with several articles on how to do better pictures and video and without buying expensive equipment. And uh, we, we put No, we effort. don't. No, we don't. We've got articles that the boss man said, by God, you'll do it this way or I'll kick your shit off the website. That's what he's talking about. For those of you who don't get to get into private forum, just saying. Was, Reduce was the size. Cool? Be sure to put the copyright in the bottom. Be sure to use this type of light. Angle it from over here. Make it an action shot. Kick it back and do filtering. Yeah, yeah. I that said kind of some aggression. Man. <laughs> It's, to be clear, it's passive aggression. Yeah. It's not. It's not really? pure totalitarian aggression. It's just passive aggressiveness, and, or is it aggressively passive? I don't know. It's for the audience, though. <laughs> he, he's, he's right. He's it's, he's right, though. You know, and all joking aside, he is right. But but we do have some articles in the background of how to write, how how to best write them, how to best rate them. You know, we joked about that a couple of weeks ago about what the different gear ratings are, uh, what the best practices are for photography and lighting and things like that. And Mitch, Mitch is dead right that, you know, the picture sell. So in the short form, the key is going to be the pictures, the gear rating, a couple of blurbs, and then go, you know, and here's the, here's the nose cam. So make sure on the nose cam that you take the pictures of the nose and inside the ear, because otherwise you ain't selling it. I'm just saying. How about the other pictures? Do I post those? No, <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. I mean, what good. audience? What audience are we trying to pull in? Right? <laughs> I mean, well, the idea behind the photographs is it's the psychology of you seeing yourself holding this, using this, wanting this. You see it, and you and you go, "Hey, look! I've got the photos right here. I can own that." Yeah. Or hold it. Or like see it, saying, yeah. or like put it next to your face, or like right up next to your mouth, or whatever. Well, well that escalated quickly. That escalated like. Did, so did we, I tuned you guys out. Like, did we just ago. fall into the shit shooting by accident? We, we I believe I we did. You guys a long time we ago. We were we were done with the products anyway, <laughs> right? Uh, does anyone? Do we even have stuff we want to talk about for upcoming? For we missed that published? one. Yeah. Because we did, we kind of transitioned into, but yeah. it's still kind. It's kind of upcoming because I really, I have wanted for years, like a decade, I have wanted to have a short form section on Gear Report, and I hadn't figured out how to pull it off and have it still have it be short and convenient, but still be valuable. Because if it's not valuable to the to the to the to our customer to our viewers to our readers it's not worth doing short and straight to the point i'll get you i'll figure something out jeff he's so, got this he's got he this it's the king of short on that note i don't have anything coming up in the near future so i'm gonna have to jump off here and go and handle yep. some business around the house thank you again for inviting me i appreciate it wow, wow. i don't have anything yeah amen brother <laughs> this weekend friday night and papa's happy so <laughs> <laughs> I do have some things to review in the queue, but nothing that's going to be in the like in the next week or two or whatever, unless I just get a wild hair or get get some some serious time behind some of the guns and and with my nose snake, you know, um, with my trouser snake, whatever that thing's called. And uh, 
<laughs> Wait, what? So, so I'm out. Thank you for, for the invite. MineryDrawMery.com, GearHuffingReport.com. Like, follow, subscribe. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. See you, sir. See you, Toby. Take care, man. Thanks for being here. We appreciate you. Oh, finally, he's gone. <laughs> we love Toby. He's awesome. I need to put this back up just because I figure if he's going to mention leaving a comment on there before, uh, G Webs does not get paid by the minute that his uh, stuff's on the screen, but you know, why not? We'll leave it there for a bit. So I, I haven't seen much. Uh, oh no. Yeah. Oh, that's a smile. Good. It looked like, it looked like the flat one, you know, the straight across like, mm -hmm. but it's actually a little smile. Okay. That's better. So, um, I haven't seen much. G webs has asked some questions, but, but the viewers out there, what, what do you think? Short form, what's critical? What do you need to see for it to be valuable enough to be worth the time to check it. I'm thinking gears rating, couple pictures, pros, cons, a sentence or two about I like it or didn't. And yeah. we're done. Yeah. I mean, functionality, make sure it functions the way it's supposed to be. You know, yeah. what, what you liked, what you didn't like. And then, then the final, I mean, that's what else is there? I mean, especially on some, some products, that's all you need. Yeah. Will it blend? Will it blend? You ever seen the videos where they put stuff in blenders? No. <laughs> it's awesome. It's an industrial blender, and they put cell phones, they put everything, and this thing blends them. It will actually, it's that strong, and that was always the tagline. Will it blend? Will the item do what it's supposed to do? If it does, thumbs up. If it doesn't, check it. Wow. Okay. People, people watch crazy stuff. I've got Dude. some... I've got some video in the queue that I haven't edited yet. I posted a little teaser of it where I was playing with the concept. I called it Humvee versus where I just run over random stuff with the Humvee and like set the camera by it. I've got, I've got some more I need to do with that, but I, I got on to doing that because I stumbled on some on YouTube that had millions and millions of views, 20, 30, 50 million views of just some person in a random little car just running over stuff and i'm like really people watch people this watch yeah just squish stuff run it over so maybe that's part of the short form is we only do it if we also have a clip of running over it yes there it is that could be interesting but uh um, my friend's anyway. gonna go out and run over tomorrow what is the microphone? No, yeah. man, you got to use it. I know. I like it. Yeah, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. <laughs> All right. You put it up here so it looks more obnoxious on the screen. There we go. <laughs> I do like kind of the down angled up it uh, where it's a little less obtrusive. All right. That's, that's disturbing. Man. I think I think our audience said, and this is too much like work. I just want to be entertained. You stop asking me stuff. Yeah. Don't, 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 don't tell me I gotta type something. Hey, to fill out anything. Yeah. All right, that's fine. We'll we'll talk about oh, and we lost another one. All right. Oh let's, let's get back to stuff that things will be reviewed soon. You guys have anything coming? I do. Uh, oh. I just got notified there's some stuff on the way. So once it gets here, I will uh, give you a heads up. So the flashlight, one one of the flashlights from Emelent's coming. Uh -huh. um, and then some some shoes from uh, Zoom. Is that right? Did I say that right? Oh, sure. Um, man, I'm blanking. No, you, I, I don't think you did. How do you spell it? Because I'm oh, zero, is it zero shoe? Do you have something coming from zero shoe? Yep, zero. Sorry. Yep. So they hit me up and said they're going to be sending some some items, and so I'm going to 
probably have those out. Those will uh, those will be perfect for those a uh, short type form review. So I'm gonna probably put those in that kind of a format and let you look at it and see what you think. Uh huh. Okay. Um. Yeah, could be. That'll be interesting. Yeah. So uh, the stuff I'm thinking about, I'm I'm getting. Uh, I got to figure out more outdoorsy type stuff. Is more kind of around the house stuff that I'm getting from that Amazon program right now. But I really think that um, we can get a whole lot higher volume of content out, which is going to be more helpful to our audience if we can uh, if we can do things a little bit quicker and get a little higher volume out there. And yeah, I agree that that um, the kind of snap decision, quick decision products, you, we can do less and uh, something that's more expensive that uh, yeah. they maybe will be used more. The people will want a little bit deeper information. So, yeah, thank you. I appreciate the feedback there. Definitely. Um, definitely depends on what the, what, the, what the product is. Yep. Yep. I agree. So I'm going to have to figure out how to do that as a format. I think, uh, do we need a template or just like tell you guys, here's what you need to have in it. And you, you got, you're smart people. Everyone who writes at gear report is above average, right? I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying. DJ's face <laughs> says it all. <laughs> oh, what he's talking about. My the, man, the man in Florida. I just figured out how to use this stuff today. Yeah? The microphone? Yeah. And the computer. I'm on the computer tonight. Oh, wow. So w was it hard to set up? No. Super easy. Cool. Super right. easy. You just have to keep it this close to your face. <laughs> there you go. See, that's your review right there. We can yeah. pull it out of this video, clip that out, you know, and that'll be a review video. Perfect. Done. Oh, Sign so, me up, so I see computer glow on your face. Did the, uh, do, you, do you have that little light set up? No. Did you forget? The laptop in front of my, my giant computer screen. Um, the light, the, the vanity light, the light was a strobe light and it almost gave me a seizure. <laughs> So it doesn't do like a white light, a steady light? No. No, 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 it doesn't. No. Oh, but it'll, it'll jam music and uh, it'll it'll go on a fast strobe with every color known man. And uh, You need to set it up. Here, we'll talk about something else. You go set it up and then I'll put you on the spotlight camera and you can turn that, that light on because we need okay. to see how it works. <laughs> I think you got your answer on that one. Yeah. It's like, screw you. I'm out. Um, yeah. So anyhow. Uh, so boy, let me see. We had a couple, there are a couple in the queue that are about to be published. Hopefully, man, I'm going to have to get up early and get to them tomorrow. I am, uh, I'm going to try to, I don't know if I'm going to have much time to get, anything published this weekend, which kind of sucks. But um, let's see. I, I'm, I'm trying to load on the back end to see what the pending reviews were, because I know there are a couple that are in there. Okay. there go. Pending. Uh, that's not, a, that's that? not, a, that's not annoying at all. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to get back to it. I'm on the other screen here. Let's oh. see. Looks like TJ's at a rave. Oh wow, that is kind of cool. So play some music. Mm -hmm. Do you have something? Play some music. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't do a uh, a straight strobe. Man, that straight, is... a solid light. It, it flashes. It has like a low strobe and seizure strobe. Those are your two. Those are your two options. And the, and the strobe that syncs to music. Yes, that's. I mean, that was actually nice. K Man was excited about that one. Yeah. Well, that's my goal is make K-Man happy. Yeah, so. yeah. You'll, listen, if you come down, you'll probably experience it. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, it'll be a good seizure. We'll start the cameras up and we'll just uh, we'll, we'll get lit and play some loud music and let the strobe go until one of us is flopping on the floor. It'll we be can fun. put it outside. I'm going to set up a pool too while you before you get here. Did you say a pool or pole? A pool. Yeah, set up the old redneck uh, above ground pool before you get here. Pool. I just said pole. I was like, dude, I don't dance anymore. $20 is $20. Come on now. Yeah, yeah he retired El Jefe. That's, That's his point. stage name. Yeah. <laughs> we weren't supposed to reveal the stage name, but whatever. All right. <laughs> Mitch always crossing the line. All right. Let's see. Upcoming. Oh, oh. The off button for this. It's just it's bothering me. All right, there we go. All right. So I'll, I'll take you off of the spotlight then. If oh, you're my gosh. Out of it. There we go. <laughs> so uh let's see we have 511 tactical covert 18 backpack uh jason um the rogue banshee uh, has that review in the queue oh and then uh caleb caleb actually came over to gear report headquarters a few months ago uh right after hunting season and recorded a video on uh, how to stay warm while hunting uh, on a budget. Uh, uh, how to stay warm on a budget while hunting. I don't know, grammatically, that it seems to have different context. What order do you put it in? But you know, budget warmth clothing stuff for hunting, however, however that's supposed to be worded. And um, we shot the video and edited it and it has been sitting out on our YouTube channel as an unpublished video for a couple months and he has written the the he's done the written part to accompany it so we can publish it so i just have to finish editing that and we'll have that so those two are in the queue and ready to go i've got a whole bunch of stuff that i've been publishing amazon reviews on that i may uh use that as the test subjects for this short form stuff so here's another question all right since i'm stuck on this because I'm telling you, I have wanted for at least a decade to have a short form section on Gear Report. Um, so let's go back to, oop, that's the wrong one. That is behind the scenes. Let me, the danger, Will Robinson. All right, we need to get that off the screen. <laughs> and, see that. Uh, we want to go to a different Chrome tab for here. We're back at Gear Report. So the way that we typically have this set up is we have, uh, th these are all of our long form reviews here and you get a little blurb about it and the hero image, especially that one for the SUP board. Um, do, uh, do, do we have a separate section? Do I need a separate section for the short form stuff so it doesn't blend in here? Cause I'd hate for someone to be scrolling through here and go, oh, here's a review on that Henry rifle I was looking for and they open it up and it's a short form couple sentences it'll be like dude this sucks what a jip you know i don't, I don't know if you could do a, a short form review on that you know what i'm saying that's i uh, guess like that's yeah. definitely a, a long form yeah i mean none of the stuff that i see here really looks like a great example of a short form product but and that's where we tend to neglect those short form products just because it's like yeah you could just call them something like flash review, something that kind of looks like a, a hot hit thing that you, someone could just click on, takes them to the short form review. And then, you know, obviously we're going to put more of those out more often than the long form reviews, but that way they would know where to go to see those specifically. Oh, I'll tell them where to go. Believe me. Exactly. Uh, people tell me enough. I wonder, we got two columns here for desktop, at least maybe I do one column of full reviews and other of quick reviews, flash reviews, whatever. Tack reviews. No, no, that would make sense. Um, but then on mobile, it only shows up as one column. So I don't know. Tactical just, reviews. Tactical, tactical reviews. Exactly. Oh, geez. oh, look at that. I missed it. Toby gave us some parting comments. Hate you. Mean it. We love Toby. Bastard. Yeah. All right. So 
good. You, you'll give me something to think about and something to do um, next time I'm hanging out in Florida. Which yes. may or may not happen soon. We shall see. Um, I have something to do in Florida soon that I really keep expecting will be canceled. Um, and if it is, I may, I may just go anyway. We shall see. So the space is waiting for you. It's fun. Yeah. All right. So you tell, uh, you tell Donna to go poop there and get the spot ready for me. Um, because TJ's dog likes to poop where I sleep whenever I'm at TJ's house. She likes so. you. Yeah, apparently. What'd you get? It's a sign of affection. Yep. That's it. At least, the, at least the cat doesn't pee on you. Yeah. Yeah, which is good. Yeah, I appreciate that. Okay, so what else we want to talk about? We, we've, run, uh, we've run off most of the viewers, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I say... Everybody I see, left. I say it's time to shut it down. What do you think? We've we've exhausted everyone's patience. We've covered everything we're here to cover for us. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to shut it down. All right. All right. Uh, I got to got to figure out where. All right, there. I got to get queued up for it. So when I say that's it for this week of gear report and. We'll see you at the range.